Hey guys, Steve Losh here, and I figured I'd do a screencast uh, about how I manage my windows and such on OS X. I've kind of pieced together a uh, window management solution, kind of a poor man's Xmonad almost, <laughs> um, from various apps, and I figured I'd show you how it works. So, okay, the first app that I use is an app called Stay. Um, it's by a company called Cordless Dog, I think. Um, yeah, there we go. And basically what Stay does is you can set up windows wherever you want them, and then you save their positions. And then you can resize whatever you want. And then you press your keyboard shortcut. And for me, it's uh, Control-Shift-Return, or Control-Shift-Enter. And it'll just magically make everything go back. Um, the reason it looks like my terminal window disappeared is because it went on to my monitor over here. I have a monitor here that I'm not recording the screencast on. Um, but yeah, so I actually have three monitors that I'm working on now, so. But basically, um, it's really handy because it'll just throw everything back to whatever the default positions are, so you can get your windows nice and lined up and do that. Um, but that, that's good for just putting everything in one place, but a lot of times I want a little bit more flexibility. And so, the next app that I use is called Moom. M-O-O-M. I believe it's in the Mac App Store. Um, yeah, it's this app. Yeah, it's in the App Store. And basically what it does, the first thing it does, is when you mouse over this, um, the zoom button, uh, it'll let you use a grid to resize your windows, um, which is cool and all. The reason I like this, uh, basically I use Moom to resize my windows before I store them with Stay. <laughs> because I like to have um, everything lined up nicely. Like, I don't want, I don't want them to be misaligned like this. See how they're not lined up. I'd much rather have them perfectly lined up. It just makes me happy. So I do that, and then I would set iTerm. I think it's there. Nope, one, one fewer. There we go. And then I would set stay to save them here so that, you know, there's a nice 10 pixel border or whatever that is there. So I do that. Moom also has um, the ability to add keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to delete these. I actually don't need these. I was playing around with this. Um, it sets up keyboard shortcuts um, that you can move windows between the displays. Um, and since I have three displays, it's pretty helpful. So I've set up in my little keyboard diagram here, because maybe this will help you understand. It's, it's makes It's going to sound crazy, the keyboard shortcuts I use, but it really does make sense once I diagram them out. So. What the hell, OS X? Just continue. Just edit the damn thing. Okay. Um, sorry, OS X's being weird. Um, so basically, um, I use Vim a lot, so HJKL are pretty ingrained in my fingers. Um, so, um, let me make this a little bigger. How do I do that in Pixelmator? Oh God. Let's try this. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so for... Moving windows around, um, or between displays, I use Control, Shift, Alt, right? So it's this big three chord at the, with my left hand, and then uh, H and L, so left and right in Vim, right? So those are the keys I use to move things between my desktop, or sorry, my, uh, my monitors. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with Firefox here. You can't see it, but trust me, it's doing it. Um, ignore the fact that it says left arrow there. That's a, something else entirely. Um, just trust me. I'm pressing the keys that I just highlighted. Okay. So I've got that. So that lets me move windows between monitors. Uh, and stay, we'll, st we'll move them back to the original monitor they were on. So if I move Firefox over there, and then I hit stay, it'll move it back to this monitor. So, yeah, okay. So that's stay and move. The next app I use is called Keymando. Um, I think it's just Keymando.com. Yep. So it basically lets you uh, write Ruby scripts for keyboard shortcuts. Um, it's really, really quite nice. Um, it's a little buggy. Uh, it crashes probably about, I, I have a dev build, so it crashes probably once or twice an hour. Um, but I just wrote, uh, a launch descript to relaunch it whenever it crashes, and so I never even notice, so whatever, it works. Um, and basically I have a whole bunch of keys that I use to switch between apps, 
So you can see here, I prefixed them all with control shift and then something else. Um, and so the reason for that is because I don't like alt tab as much as most people do. Um, alt tab's useful, but it's hard to get in your muscle memory. Um, because so I'm on Firefox right now. If I click Pixelmator and then um, Terminal and then Twitter, how many times do I need to press tab to get back to Firefox? Well, I don't know. That I think three maybe, uh, but it's going to be different each time. Whereas if I know, you know, I have one keyboard shortcut that always brings me back to Firefox, I can get that in my fingers. So that's what I do. Um, let me show you what I actually do here. Um, so for switching between applications, so not monitor. Monitors, remember, was Control Shift All. Uh, applications, I use Control Shift because I do it far more often, right? Um, so do Control Shift. Uh, Firefox is J because I want to. Um, I want to do it a lot. J is right under my index finger. It's really easy to press. Uh, Mac Vim is K, right? Because it's right next to Firefox, and I'm toggling between them very, very often. So if I open up MacVim here, I'll, I'll just show you. I open up MacVim, uh, Shift Control J, Shift Control K, J, K, J, K, and it doesn't matter if I click a whole bunch of other stuff in between. Um, reminder: Still, J always brings me to Firefox. K always brings me to Vim. Um, yep. Um, let's see what else do I have here. I don't have anything for Xcode, <laughs> um, which for some reason Commando insists on using when I edit my file, but whatever. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, P is Pixelmator, so if I'm editing some graphics or uh, trying to draw some a diagram of something to keep myself sane, P is Pixelmator. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? B is Pixen. Um, I've just downloaded Pixen to start playing with it for pixel graphics. Um, don't use it that much, but figured I'd assign a key to it. Um, like I said, K is Mac then. Uh, I is um, I is actually a little trickier. Um, We'll talk about that in a second, actually. Um, H is iTerm, because I, it, it's H because I usually keep it on the left side of my workstation, so either my left-hand monitor or um, just the left side of my screen. Um, yeah, so H is left in Vim, so I think of it as um, selecting the, the terminal over on the left. So um, O is RDO, for the O in RDO. Handy to start and stop. Just select it with O and then pause with space. Um, Twitter is Y, just because I often keep it in the very upper left of my leftmost screen. So if you could, see, if you were looking at my left screen, it would be up here. And so Y is kind of off over there. So the next three are a little trickier. Um, what I've done, I have, I took the iTerm application the actual like uh, Mac app bundle, and duplicated it and changed a couple of files in a plist somewhere um, so that I could get a second app called iDBTM, which I have over here. Uh, basically, it's just iTerm under a different name running dbtm. And inside dbtm, which is a little, um, it's kind of like a lightweight tmux or screen. Um, yeah, basically, you can change different windows. So I have a terminal here that I just use for scratch anything if I want to just go to my dot files real quick or whatever. Um, I have WeChat, which is an IRC client, and I have MUT, which is email. Um, and so the way I handle this, I have three shortcuts, M, I, and N. So if I go back here, um, so those are these keys, oops. So there's N, M, and I. Right? So we've got those. Just check on the time here, okay. Um, M-I-N. Each of them activates IDVTM. So if I go uh, Control shift m I go to DVTM, Control shift i I also go there, Control shift n I also go there. The difference is that they activate it, and then they send two keystrokes. Uh, the first one's Control f which is the escape character for DVTM, and then they send a number. Um, and basically, in a nutshell, it's the number is going to select one of these three DVTM windows. Um, so if I press Control shift n um, it activates IDVTM and moves to the first window, so my uh, terminal. I don't know why I picked N. It just seemed okay. It was free. Um, I is for IRC. So if I press uh, Control shift i um, 
it'll you can see that it highlighted the IRC window even though I wasn't in it. So I'm going to switch back to terminal, back to here, Control Shift I, switches to DVTM, and puts me my focus in the IRC chat. And M of course is for mail, mut, either one, mail or mut, puts my focus in there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much um, pretty much switching between applications. That's what I do. Um, you can see that I use my left hand to do the modifiers, and then my right, all the apps are on my right hand. It's really nice. Um, takes some, probably took like a week or two to get into my muscle memory, but now it's really nice to not have to hunt through and say, okay, where's Firefox? Um, uh, oh, there it is. Okay, now I want to go, I want to quit uh, Xcode. There it is. You know, I can just say, go to my mail, or, uh, well, there's that window. Uh, go to iTerm. Go to Pixelmator, go to RDO, go to Twitter, you know. And then the cool thing is I can combine that with my movement shortcuts, right? So I can do, uh, I can say, move to iTerm and move it onto the screen, right? Or move it onto the other screen. Yeah, so the last bit that I have, um, the last layer, I guess you could say, uh, is my resizing shortcuts. Um, so my resizing shortcuts let me um, resize windows just with keystrokes. So if I want to temporarily line up some windows really nicely. Um, and basically the modifiers for those, I use Control, Shift. Uh, this is Command, yeah, Control, Shift, Command, so that's right. So remember, um, the switching between apps was control shift, because I do it all the time. Um, control option shift moves between windows, and control command shift uh, resizes. It sounds complicated, but it's really, once you get it into your fingers, it's pretty easy. These all form nice chords. It's almost like playing guitar chords. Um, so, yeah, so I have a whole bunch of these defined, and for these, I use an app called Breeze. Um, it's really simple window management. Basically what you do is you resize a window to whatever size you want to store, and then you go to Breeze and you say, save this state. And it'll you can assign it a keyboard shortcut. And I use, of course, Moom to get the states all set up so that they're all nice and aligned um, beforehand, right? So, I have a whole bunch of them, and I don't remember all of them off the top of my head, but I'll try to go through them. Um, I'll use this MacVim window as, a, as an example. Um, in a blank Firefox window. So, let me see if I remember all these. So, um, the resize chord and H is a half screen left. So it takes up half the screen and it's on the left, right? So I normally would not alt tab there, but I've got like my one finger on this pen, one finger on the keyboard. So H is half screen left. And you can probably guess what right is. Um, it's L. So this gives me a really easy way to put two windows side by side. Um, and it fits the Vim, you know, H and L for left and right. Right. Um, J and K are in the middle of those, and so they put the window in the middle. Uh, J, oops, sorry. J puts it in the middle, and it's fairly big. K puts it in the middle and takes up the entire screen, actually. So. Um, if I want to focus on something but don't want to take up quite everything, like I want to be able to access my desktop and the files on it, I use J. Or if I just want the whole thing um, maximized, I use K. Um, so that's what those are. So that's the HJKL for resizing. Um, I also use uh, N and M as kind of a smaller version of J and K. They both put windows in the center. Um, oh, sorry. It's hard to talk about these and do them at the same time. Um, they just make them a little smaller. This is often if I'm typing an email or something, um, I'll resize the window to be small like this. Um, but, yeah, so big, big left, or half, half left, half right, um, middle, maximized, middle smaller, middle tiny, basically. Um, and then, I also have two more, um, and that should be about it. Um, B over here, uh, it, I kind of think of like a bigger left. So 
if uh, H puts half screen, B gives it just a little more. And this is really nice for Firefox, um, for because most sites will have, be at least like, you know, around a thousand pixels, maybe a little bit less if they're using 960 grid system or, you know, something like that. And so if I, um, uh, I don't think Twitter Bootstrap actually here, GitHub. I think GitHub's a good example. Um, if I just do half screen, it's pretty cramped, right? It barely fits, right? That's just, and a lot of sites won't fit at all on that. I don't know if, I don't know if Bitbucket will, will fit. I can't remember. Um, no, Bitbucket scrolls. So usually when I'm using uh, Firefox, I'll use just one bigger than that. And so that's a perfect size for Firefox to be. Um, and then you can probably guess if this one over here is the bigger left, then this one over here is the bigger right, comma. So I try to lay these out spatially so they make a little more, a little bit more sense. So big left, big right, left, right, small right, big right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, I think that's it. Um, it's kind of crazy and a little bit flaky sometimes. It's not always perfect, but uh, it generally gets the job done. So it's good enough for me. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'm sure there's better ways to do some of this, but this is the way that I've settled on because it lets me customize. There's a couple of important things. Number one is it lets me um, customize the sizes of everything. Um, I know there's a couple of other window managers like Cinch and Divi um, or window management utilities. They're not really window managers um, that let you, you know, just split windows, you know, put them in the upper left or on the left. But I need, I really want control over exactly everything because I'm a little bit annoyingly a perfectionist like that. Um, and the other thing is I need to be able to define the actual keyboard shortcuts because there's too many things that use the arrow keys. So, all right, guys, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, if I have any questions, or if you have any questions, find me on Twitter or on YouTube or whatever. Cool, thanks, hope it was useful.